Hi, this is Ed again from Golf Stats. And now I'm going to go over our tool section on our homepage. That's this section right up here. And what these are are tools that help you get some insight into who's playing well coming into the current week. So we'll start with prior tournaments. I would suggest you keep all the defaults. You can play around with them if you do one of our trials and it defaults to the current field. So what it will show you is the field coming into the current tournament and their performance for the previous four years of the tournament and the prior four weeks on tour. And you can change these values in the previous screen. Um, so this is the report here. These are all the columns. So for each the previous four years or the previous four weeks, we show uh, cuts made versus tournaments played. And you can mouse over this number here. You'll see these are the previous two years out of the previous four that uh, Abraham Answer, this player, played in the tournament. Cuts made percentage, rounds, average finish, median finish, and average point, draft kings, average points per round, eagles, birdies, pars, bogeys, doubles, and others. And it shows if the same. You can sort by any one of these fields to get some insight into who's had the most rounds, say, in the previous four years for the players. Uh, you can look at average finish and so forth. And you can do this trying to get some insight in who might be playing well coming into this week or played well in the previous players' championships. An additional feature we have on this page and a lot of our uh, reports like this is this team builder tool. So this allows you to uh, build a DraftKings team or it's applicable to other games as well. So let's say I wanted Lee Westwood on my team. It'll add Lee Westwood and subtract his salary from the max of 40 to 50,000. Show me how much I have left. So as I go down, I can kind of assemble my team and see where I am point wise. So you can look for good values. I could sort again by DraftKings salary and look again at their average finish, median finish for the previous players championship four weeks on tour. And I can use this maybe to build uh, my team. I can start at the bottom and look for players down here that maybe have um, a good cuts made percentage for this tournament. Uh, so here's like Zach Johnson. He's made two of the previous three cuts in uh, 2018 and 2021. It's only $6,000. I can scroll down. Here's uh, JT Poston, two of two and so forth. So you can use these tools to get some insight. So that's prior tournaments. Let's go on to horses for courses. Again, I'm going to take the default. So what this looks at is the previous 20 years on the course. As you know, sometimes tournaments are played on, multiple tournaments can be played on the same course. Not so much this week, but other weeks, other courses. But this is a similar report, but just focused on players who have played well on this course. Again, you can sort by these values up here, birdies per round, so forth. You can build your team and you can sort by DraftKings salary. And again, you have the cuts made number. So uh, Justin Thomas, for instance, a uh, high DraftKings salary, but he's played the, the um, on this course six times and has made the cut every time. So if I sorted by the lower DraftKings salary and I look for a player who's played a lot like Zach Johnson, he's probably a good bet this week. Uh, Jimmy Walker, um, Henrik Stenson, players who maybe have played here a lot, made a good percentage of cuts down low in the value. But that's horse for courses, showing you which players have played best on the course for this week. Let's go on to course stats. Course stats, similar look at courses. I can pick a certain year, uh, or I can pick a specific course and see how that course has, uh, how the results have been 
I've done on that course. Uh, let me, it's like, for instance, I can put in Pebble Beach. And it'll give me course statistics for that course, uh, for any tournaments that's been played on Pebble Beach um, since 1990. So um, you can scroll down all the way down. So you'll see US Opens and AT&Ts and so forth. So for every year, we will show the average round, average score per round, birdies, pars per round, bogeys, doubles, average driving distance, average greens in regulation, and average putts per round. Let's go on to Boss of the Moss. So this is analyzing players' performance by greens type. So again, we're going to just go back four years, minimum rounds eight, and look at the players' championship. Now, this week we know it lists here that we're playing on Bermuda Greens. So these would be, uh, let me look at this player's experience and performance on Bermuda Greens. So I can look and see how many tournaments they've played on Bermuda Greens over the previous four years. And I can mouse over the list number there and it'll show me which tournaments they've played in. How many cuts they've made, rounds they've played, average finish, average birdies per round. And again, I can sort by these numbers. So I might want to look at the average finish for players in this week's field on Bermuda Greens over the past four years. So that's what this will show me. And again, I know it's Bermuda Greens because we list it up here. You can look at for any greens type, but it, you're more pertinent this week would be the grass we're playing on this week. So this shows me that Justin Thomas has played 21 tournaments over the past four years on Bermuda Greens and has the best average finish of anyone in the field. I could also look at birdies per round. It's similar to Justin Thomas. Cameron Young, low draft king salary, uh, has played seven tournaments on Bermuda Greens, uh, second in birdies per round. All the other kind of the usual suspects of your top players, you get down to Garrett Kigo, though, he's only 6,600. He's averaging 4.48 birdies has made five cuts out of seven tournaments. So that's the kind of insight that Boss of the Moss can give you. We also provide every week a competitor handbook. And you can pick it for any of the previous, actually two weeks on tour. So this is a summary for every player in the field on how they've done in recent tournaments, well, recent players, and their stats for the re recent players. This is over the last seven years. These are for all the all years. So, and then for instance, John Rahm has played in four players championship, 15 rounds, average place 39, etc. Then this will show you their most recent tournament record over the past three months and their PGA Tour records stats over the past 18 months. So it's a lot of background and current information. And again, it's for every player in the field. That's updated uh, every Monday. PGA Tour statistics. These are directly from the PGA Tour. They're updated every Monday. You can look at up to 36, 36 different statistics. Uh, and these can be useful if you're trying to pick someone for this week. And you know, with the, uh, let's say TPC saw graphs, let's say it's a really important to score well on par five there. So I can click here and I'll look at the current PGA Tour statistics for par five scoring average and see who's number one, number two, so forth, how they rank. And you'll see the top uh, 50 players on this uh, particular report. So these are all statistics, stroke gained, Putting, strokes gain total, total driving, if you're looking at who's driving the best currently on the PGA Tour. You can look up official money, you can look up golf rankings, part three scoring average. All these statistics are updated every Monday. 
Uh, and then lastly, we have a head-to-head -head matchup tool. This can be good if you're wondering well, who might do the best this week between two players. So I type in player number one here. Let's say I pick John Rahm. And let's say for player number two, I want Colin Morikawa. You can pick the time period that you want to look compare them over. I'm just going to go six months. And you can actually pick a particular tournament, but we're just going to go previous six months. So what I see here is comparing these two players over the previous six months using all of these parameters, tournaments played, wins, top tens, etc. And the uh, orange one is who had the better result over the previous six months based on this uh, variable. We have first round scoring average, second, third, fourth, green fairways hit, greens hit, etc. So, and then we summarize the final score down here. So in this case, Colin Morikawa overwhelmingly is better in the head-to-head -head matchup over John Rahm. You can customize this. So let's say I don't care about tournaments played. I don't really care about wins. I don't care about top 20s. Uh, I don't care about rounds under par. You can wait. In other words, you can rate. What I care the most about might be fairways hit. I want to give that two. I care about putts. Who's the better putter? So I can wait it any way I can. And then I can click on redo. So now it'll redo those numbers based on these weights. So this has three times as much important as anybody else. So someone would get three points for winning this one. That's how that works. And then the totals up does a new uh, total down here. So in this case, Calamora Cower is a better bet. But that's how head-to-head -head, um, matchup tool works. So that's it for the tool section up here. And thank you for watching.